Life comes at you fast. That's the saying, right? You see it all over the internet. And it's funny how, what, 24, 48 hours ago, Dub Nation, we're on cloud nine. The young fellas are contributing. The chemistry, the vibes are up. Here we come. One game. One game and, oh, how it feels so differently. Uh, Let's talk about the game first, right? As I went through the tape this morning for my patron breakdown, which is up now, 15 minutes, quarter by quarter, play by play, take by take, um, support the channel. Um, What I was most curious about was that pick and pop coverage with Vucevic and Draymond, you know, showing and trying to recover. And how could they have played that differently, right? The Bulls, they put you in a predicament, man, because Kobe White, Kobe, I keep calling him Kobe because of the C. Kobe White, uh, probably top 10 quickest first steps in the league when he turns the corner on you. And then you have Vucevic who, look, I get it, 28% from three this year. He's been at 40, I think, since the All-Star break. And I think if you followed his career, you know he is willing to take and make that shot, right? And we dared him too much initially. I think Draymond being, uh, you know, seeing him only twice a year at most, sometimes maybe once a year, depending if they miss each other, someone's out, right? You know, there's not a familiarity or a rivalry by any means between he and Vucevic, like you see with some of the Western Conference bigs, right? And so I think just initially, he didn't give Vucevic the due respect he deserved, even if he is shooting 28%. He hasn't been. And you know that he's a willing shooter. And by the time Draymond woke up and was like, all right, man, let me, let me try to put the clamps on this dude. He's rolling. It was too late. But Billy Donovan has this team coached up right now. They're, they're, they're Spain pick and rolls. And the predicament that they put defenses in with that pick and pop or roll, we had no answer for. I think ultimately what I would have done in hindsight was um, went under and dared Kobe and... Uh, the Sumu and, and their guards to stop and pop that three or switched it. And I get some of the, the issues with switching was if it's CP, Pajemski, or Steph, you don't want them switching on Vucevic. But to, to just have Draymond kind of drop and show on the driver and then halfway recover out to Vucevic, it hurt us in the first quarter and it hurt us in the fourth quarter when he hit that big three to tie the game. Sticking to the game before we get into more of these big picture subject matters, DeMar DeRozan, five and one opportunities last night. And you saw Kaminga kind of get taken in the classroom. I'd love for Kaminga to work with DeMar this summer. Probably the best mid-range footwork in the game, the way he uses his pivots, his spin moves, his hips, the pump fake. Um... He is almost like the mid-range James Harden when it comes to the rules of defending him. If you reach out, he's going to get you, as you saw with that hot stove call over and over again. And then the other aspect of him getting to his spots, he gets to his spots so easily, I think in part because the defender is so fearful of the foul. You're over-yielding. You're like, all right, all right, I'm not fouling him. Then next thing you know, he's at his spot. He's elevating and it's too late. So DeMar... We know is a problem, and he was a a problem last night. Um, I do think that you saw Pajemski with the smoked layup and Kaminga with the fouls, that these are necessary lumps that these young guys have to take in crunch time. Now, at this point in the season, you hate for them to be taking them now. You'd have loved for it to have been in the first 20 games of the year. But these are things that, that these are necessary. And they will learn from these. It's one thing to learn from it in practice or in the second quarter, but when it costs you games, it tends to stick with you and you learn from it. So it, that, that's a tough thing. And, and as far as the Pajemski smoked layup, um, yeah, I know Trace was open over the top with Kobe. He probably could have lobbed that over, but I think what happened was he thought Vucevic was going to contest the shot. And so he tried to sneak it with the left hand inside hand rather than his off right hand, who he, he has no problem using that right hand. He's got a good off hand. I don't think it was, I don't want to use my off hand. I think it was Vucevic is, is con- going to contest from behind. Let me sneak it in. And he couldn't get the English. But on to the bigger picture subjects here. And the first one is Andrew Wiggins. I haven't really spoken on it. He's back, obviously. And he played 14 minutes against Milwaukee and 15 minutes last night against the Bulls. Is he low-key being punished 
Is it like, all right, dude, like you're not going to be reliable, then we're not going to rely on you for heavy minutes. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like, I'm not saying he should have been playing 35 minutes, but 15 minutes, 14 minutes seems awful low. Seems awful low. I, I'm not quite sure what that is, but Moody, we've all been wanting to see more of him is getting that opportunity. And you saw him in that fourth quarter, make play after play. And so I'm not mad at it. I'm just pointing out like, Hey, that's, that's pretty low minutes there. 14, 15 minutes. Like I didn't expect that. I expected maybe 20 ish minutes. Right. And Here's what I'll say about the Wiggins situation. I know a lot of you, it's a, it's a hot button topic and people get mad about, oh, his privacy, all that stuff. Look, Wiggins is super likable. I have no malice towards Andrew Wiggins. Um, I think for me, reflecting on it, it, it a lot of it was fear-based as far as how I felt. Like I have, again, no malice towards Wiggins, but I was fearful that, oh, we're gonna go through this whole thing again as a fan base and have to deal and wonder and, and, and be missing this guy. And then he was back in a week. And I think that if last season he was only gone for like a week or 10 days or, or, or so, I don't think I would, I would have, or the fan base would have had the same reaction this time around. It would have been like, Oh dang, something came up again. All right. Whoop de whoop. Right. And, and, and been more accepting of it but because it stretched so long last year with no answers when it started to happen again, it, it struck fear in myself in the fan base, like, dude, this again, right? But anyway, he's back. And needless to say, I think moving forward here, at least these next few weeks, they're going to need more than 15 minutes out of Andrew Wiggins. They're, they're going to need him probably to be scoring around 20 points with Steph out. And let's talk about it here. It is noon in Arizona. I'm going to check my Twitter right now. This video is going to run a little longer, so bear with me here because we're all waiting on the results of this ankle, this MRI. I don't think it's out yet. Um, in the breakdown, I pointed it out. In the first half of the game, he actually tweaks that same right ankle on a foot coming down on a layup, and it makes you wonder if part of the stability was gone after that tweak. And We know he wears those heavy ankle braces. And I tweeted out after the game, and again, similar to the way, it's fear, it's frustration, right? It's emotional based sometimes, some of, some of my takes and, and, and responses, because ultimately I'm, I'm just a fan like y'all. And I tweeted out, the Under Armour flows are trash. And those of you that follow me know I've been on this for like four or five years. I've been on this for four or five years and I had various different responses and people saying, oh, it's unavoidable, right? Ankle sprains. You're right. The, when you come down on a foot, right? When you come down wrong, I don't think it matters what you're wearing at times. But when you have the tweaks where it's the way you've struck the ground, I think that they can be very much avoidable at times. And so bear with me here because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little, I, I want to I wanna set, set the, uh, the context of this. I am not a, a, a Curry brand hater. I am not. When the Stephs first came out, those some OGs will remember this. I got the Curry ones. They're still new in the box. It's like, hey, the chef's got shoes. Let's support them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the carry the curry ones, right? Um played, I had the lows. I love these are maybe one of my favorite shoes of all time. The curry twos. These are the suit and tie. And there's actually a little portion here on the outer rig where if you catch this wrong, it'll break away. The rubber will break away and kind of save your ankle from turning over, right? Um, and over the years, as they change stylistically, I didn't get them as much up until the, the, the I got the first uh, iteration of the new flow foam and that new style that he has. And again, those that follow me closely know I was like, can't do it. Can't do it. I feel unsafe in them. There's no way. They felt like a, like a gym cross trainer. And... Uh, so I don't have hate. Like I want to support the brand. I do, but I, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I, I need to feel safe in my hoop shoes when I'm playing. And I don't even play full court anymore, but I, you know, I love basketball. I, I try to get on the court every day for at least 20 to 30 minutes, get up shots, break up sweat, just work on my little routines to this day. And I've been doing that since I was 10 years old. And I buy a pair of basketball shoes every season, sometimes two, because sometimes the shoe that I got that season, I'm like, I don't feel safe in these. Like, I don't, I, I don't feel safe up and down. I feel like I'm going to roll my ankle. And that was, I think it was the Curry 10s, the first flows. And I was like, I can't with these. I can't mess with these. 
Um, and so what I'm getting at here is because I had people tell me, oh, high ankle sprain, it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. And usually a high ankle sprain happens when the outer front, you know, right where your toes start on the outer side of your foot, you roll it over. It's more on the front of the foot. You know, it's not a back ankle turn. It's on the front of the foot. And then it sprains higher up on the ankle. Right. And I'm like, no, dude, they listen, when you come down on a foot, I get it. Sometimes it's unavoidable. But when you just strike the ground wrong, um, it is avoidable in certain shoes. And if you pay attention, Hoopers, you know this to be true. And again, these Curry twos, that th th there's so much more containment. That's the problem with these new steps. There's no containment. So when you plant hard, you're coming out over the sole and then the flow rubber itself is very soft, the ones that I have, and so that gives. And when you look at when he planted there, the whole shoe gave, the whole shoe gave. And like, you ever rock these, the Kobe Pro Tros? You see this, this outrig here? You see how wide this is out here? That's to prevent that high ankle sprain. It ain't happening in these, it ain't happening in these, man. I'm telling you, and listen, I'm upset, and I think we all are about you know this happening, and so yeah, I'm whining, what does it matter? It happened, right? I get it. But I just, I'm just trying to make a point here because um, I think you're kidding yourself if you think that part of Steph having to wear these flow tros or whatever you call them in, in these shoes, it's it's part, it's big business, man. He owns a portion of Under Armour, the Curry brand. They've invested a ton of, mo ton of money into that tech and trying to make a shoe that looks different from Nike and Adidas. And I can't wear them. I don't feel safe in them. And to each their own. I know there were people pushing back on Twitter saying, I love them. And we all know we play it. We have different styles. We strike the ground differently. For me, 6'2", 200 pounds, I play on the perimeter. No, nah, they're a no-go for me. And so it just frustrates me because I do think that there is a part of it that Steph has to wear these because of the branding, the... Um, investment from UA and, and the Curry brand in these shoes. And I think that ultimately he's not doing himself a favor in them. Yes, some of this stuff is unpreventable, but there are shoes like this and there are design like that and like his old ones that were much more stable and I felt much safer playing. My rant's done with, with the shoes. Um, what's a high ankle sprain um, timetable? It's usually six to eight weeks, right? Now, granted, he wears the brace. He's 36 years old now, y'all. A, a high ankle sprain for a 36-year-old, he ain't getting over it quick. And if I were to guess right now, today, I don't think we see him the rest of the regular season. How, how, how many more games are there? We're, we got like 20 more games. I, don't, I haven't done the exact math. We're going, I think it'd be pushing it. I think it'd be pushing it. Now, I've been wrong before. Again, those of you that follow me a long time, I, I overreact to injuries. I, I know I admittedly do. Again, it's fear-based maybe. But that's just a general generalization. We don't know. Everyone's different. But if you you say a general uh, high ankle, like a full, what are they going to call it? A grade two, probably, most likely. Um, it's six to eight weeks. And so now the Warriors find themselves in a real predicament. Um, just trying to survive, to stay in the play-in, right? Because Utah could be lurking. They, they might get knocked out the play-in. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's tough, man. It's tough as everything was going so well. Um, now, you know, it's just hold on until Steph can get back. Right. And if they can hold on to a play in spot, you know, there is a world where Steph gets back in the nick of time. Oh yeah. And his legs are recharged. His body is recharged because I think that that has been an underlining subject before this injury in the last couple of weeks, right? It's been like, yo, Steph looks kind of worn down, right? He looks a little worn down right now. He's had to carry too much. And there's no way he was going to sit when we're chasing a playoff spot. But now he has no choice but to sit. And this has happened in the past where Steph has looked worn down, got chipped up, come back fresh. It's can he come back in time? We know that Steph is going to do everything he can to, he, you know, he's not going to, he's going to leave no stone unturned when it comes to his recovery and getting back in time. But it's a horrible timing and it looks about as serious or severe as a, as a rollover as we've seen from him in years. That said, let the Minga dynasty begin, right? They, they, they've got to lean into empowering Kaminga right now, as they have, right? But we're really going to see if he can carry the load as probably the number one option. Um, Pajemski, 
I, he need, he's shooting, what, about three threes a game? It's got to go up to about five or six. For whatever reason, he wants a, he wants a bigger window to, to get the three off than I think he needs. And I think he's got to, I think he is a shooter where with more volume, he's going to shoot it even better. It's hard. It's harder when you actually are a shooter to just take one here and one there, right? When you're an actual shooter, you need volume. Just ask Clay Thompson, right? You know, Clay is, is probably going to, I hope he doesn't slide into too much of hero ball with Steph out um, just naturally, instinctually, because that was a really patient performance from Clay last night. Right? He was very patient, specifically in transition. He came down several times. You thought he was going to jack up a shot, and he'd wait and let them set up the offense, and then eventually he ended up with the shot anyway. Right, So it, obviously it's going to take a group effort, but I think we're going to need more scoring from Pajemski and Wiggins in particular. Right, But then it also opens up, I think, the door, as I assume Chris Paul will start in his place, for a uh, trace Chris Paul pick and roll to become much more higher usage, as well as a Chris Paul Kaminga pick and roll. So hopefully the added wrinkles and unattended consequences of Steph being out can help diversify and add to the young player's growth. And then Steph's back in time to make a run, right? That's all we can hope for. Now we've got the Spurs tomorrow night. Wemby's out with an ankle himself. So, you know, it's, the loss itself was, was bad enough, but then it takes a backseat to this big picture, right? But needless to say, you got to beat the Spurs both of these games against them over the weekend. And uh, we'll sit back and wait on the MRI results. I'm guessing a grade two high ankle sprain. All right, y'all. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.